Welcome, everyone. Thanks for having me, Scott. I uh, have put together a slide deck of people you should know in the Teams community. My name is Dan Ray, so if you don't know me, let's start there. I've been with uh, both Directions Training and other training companies for over 20 years. I've been a Microsoft certified trainer since 2000, so I'm coming up on my 21st anniversary. And besides Directions, I have worked at other Microsoft partners. I have worked at Microsoft two different times. And within all of those different roles at Microsoft partners, training companies, Microsoft internal, uh, two different times in two different, at least two different roles, I have amassed a pretty large network of people that I would consider either Teams SMEs, subject matter experts, or just people that would be good to know if you're working with Microsoft Teams. And where do these folks come from, from a standpoint of the Teams community? They're either consultants that I have met and worked with. They might be other Microsoft certified trainers. That was an easy place for me as I went back out on my own in 2020, December of 2020, to start connecting with other Microsoft certified trainers that were doing Microsoft Teams training. They might be people that I've met through user groups or conferences. I did my first SharePoint Saturday in Chicago in 2019. I presented on toys, Teams, Outlook, what was the Y, Yammer or U, depending on what applications you were using. And then the S was SharePoint. And it was a when to use what presentation for a SharePoint Saturday. And I met a number of people there that I had not worked with previously, some of which I had never met even through virtual connections on LinkedIn. Microsoft employees, like I said, I've worked there two different times, once for 11 years, once for like a year and a half. And I am now in charge of the Microsoft Alumni Network in Chicago. The Chicago chapter of the Microsoft Alumni Network was kicked off in 2021. If you're not familiar with the Microsoft tech community, that's another great place to look for people that might have a particular Microsoft expertise, whether that be Teams, SharePoint, hardware, different areas, even development are areas that you can find under tech community. As I mentioned, I've worked for a number of Microsoft partners, so that's some of where the different people that I have met came from. And then Microsoft most valuable professionals. I tried not to list each and every MVP that I have met or worked with, but that list that you can get to from MVP dot microsoft dot com is a great starting point for people that are community focused giving back for free presenting sharing their knowledge networking and you can search that based on geography so if you're looking for somebody in the same time zone same country very easy to uh, work with that list and look for either particular areas that they might have their mvp in or a location that they might be based in. And then LinkedIn was the other thing that I got really active on before Microsoft acquired LinkedIn. I will post a link to this presentation. It's shared on my OneDrive along with some old Microsoft Ignite presentations that I've done. But here are what I would consider the first 60 people that I actually know. So as opposed to just LinkedIn contacts, I haven't had a lot of interaction with these folks. These are all people that I know in one way or another. Most of them are in person. Um, some are still just, I've interacted with them on LinkedIn or social media. I'll go ahead and start with <clears throat> Jamie Laporte. Jamie is someone I met in Chicago, and she had some of the best infographics I have ever seen. 
for Microsoft Teams. And when I was working with end users and end user change management with a company called Brainstorm out of American Fork, Utah, one of the things that I got asked often was, how is Teams going to help us with less email? And Jamie's helping email addicts adjust to Microsoft Teams was probably my favorite concise infographic that I had found. And so I used this a lot. And then Jamie on her blog has produced all sorts of just great infographics explaining different aspects of Office 365 and maybe why you don't have a particular feature. And mentioning the government, maybe she needs a version of that bingo card for the GCC tenant and things like, why can't we have the Microsoft Forms icon or a part added to that? I'm just gonna skip around to some people. I probably won't have time to go through all 60. So let's look for somebody else that makes sense to highlight here. Ducks Raymond Sai, if you have gone to any Microsoft conference, Ducks is somebody that you probably are familiar with. And I have met him a couple times. And when I was at Microsoft, I had as a full timer this last go around in 2019 access to something called LinkedIn Elevate. And what LinkedIn Elevate allowed me to do as a Microsoft employee was take different things that partners that others in the community were posting and make those posts available to all Microsoft employees to repurpose, to schedule and share on LinkedIn. So between Jamie and Ducks, we did a lot of sharing of webinars that were coming up or different things Teams related that Microsoft employees could share freely on their social media. LinkedIn and Twitter were both things that we could connect through that platform. And he's been a great asset from a standpoint of Teams and Teams knowledge. He's also an MVP. Leandra Jordan is somebody else that I would recommend you connect with. Leandra and I met when Microsoft Ignite moved to Atlanta from Chicago. And Microsoft certified trainers have a day zero before, traditionally before the Microsoft Ignite or the conferences before that Microsoft Tech Ed conferences. And it's because the Microsoft certified community, training community, would typically assist with hands-on labs and other aspects of the Microsoft conferences. Leandra in Atlanta was the conference chair putting together the whole event for us. And we met then, she was a Microsoft certified trainer as well as focused on teams and collaboration. And now, probably right before I left, sometime in 2020, she started at the Microsoft Garage and the Microsoft Garage Atlanta will be launching in early 2022. So she is another person that you wanna keep on your contact list. When you get a copy of this presentation and you can download that through a OneDrive link, I will share at the end, you can also not only click into all of these, but also view the presentation just in, uh, in each individual slide. Scott, I couldn't have a presentation about people you should know and that are focused on Microsoft Teams without having you in here because I don't remember exactly how we had our exchange, whether it was something you posted or something I posted, but you mentioned this user group and that you were looking for presenters. So with each of these slides, I've also linked to the individuals LinkedIn. Hopefully everybody on this presentation is connected with Scott on LinkedIn. But if there are other people that you are not familiar with or connected with, you'll be able to click on the presentation 
and be directed directly to their LinkedIn. So you don't have to write down these names, figure out which Michael Blumenthal might be in LinkedIn. And uh, that should simplify connecting with a number of these people. Who else can we highlight here? Anastasia is somebody else that I would highly recommend you consider connecting with. We worked at Brainstorm together, and Brainstorm is focused on end user productivity and training. And Anastasia is one of those people that came with a lot of training and adult education background, and also brings just a really fun personality with her to it. So she does uh, customer immersion experiences that are focused on end user use of Microsoft Teams and other Microsoft productivity applications, but is a great person to have in your corner from a standpoint of networking, discussing, and uh, connecting with others. And I can see just from the banners, <laughs> usually who somebody is, even though they're too small to uh, to read in that summary Zoom uh, version. Nate Chamberlain is somebody that I came across. He's a Microsoft MVP. He works for a training company out of Kansas City, Missouri, and he runs one of the Microsoft collaboration events that happens. And the thing I like about Nate is not only does he have a lot of SharePoint and Teams experience, but he's been somebody that I haven't met in person yet, but have been able to collaborate with just using LinkedIn or uh, social networking, bouncing ideas off him about the Microsoft MS 700 course, which is Microsoft Teams for administrators. And discussing just various aspects of teams, either very technical um, or end user focused. How many folks on the meeting here have worked with the Microsoft Store? Is the Microsoft Store a group that you've worked with in the past? I'll bring my Teams window over here so I can see what's going on there. Anybody work with the Microsoft Store? Feel free to use a reaction or put in a comment if you have in the past. Nope. Okay. Well, the Microsoft stores are now virtual, except for the, I believe, three flagship locations. So New York, I believe, is a little different than the retail stores that were scattered throughout the US. There were a few overseas, London and Australia, I believe, also had flagship stores that are still in some type of operation. But Natalie and Nicole, were both in the Microsoft stores in Florida. One worked at the Florida Mall store and the other worked at the Fashion Mall in Orlando, Florida. And they're twins. So not only did I think I recognized one and then was wondering why they were at the other location, but uh, these two were in various, um, roles involved with Teams training and user training. Natalie, I believe at the time, was working at the um, Fashion Mall. And uh, Nicole, I believe, was the one over at the Florida Mall. I might have them back backwards there. But one was at one mall and one was at the other. And if you haven't had a chance to see the Microsoft Office twins videos that were produced, I believe the short cut was Office 365 Twins, if memory serves. We'll see here if it redirects me to the videos. It does not.
the twins challenge were a number of videos that Microsoft made with identical twins. And one twin was given the Microsoft 365 version of Word, PowerPoint, or Excel. And the other twin was given the 2019 version of the same product. And then they were asked to do a number of different things with them. Natalie and Nicole at some point hopefully will produce something similar to that twin challenge with uh, maybe Microsoft Teams. Maybe we can have one use the GCC tenant, one use the commercial tenant and see who's more efficient or who can accomplish things quicker in one versus the other. Or maybe an environment that's locked down versus an environment where the user has uh, capabilities outside of just the Microsoft apps, that type of thing. Be fun to produce a video like that. Overseas, if we think about people that you should know that are not just in the US, I would highlight Chris Horde as one of those contacts that I have come across. He's not somebody that I've worked with in person, but between his work community-based as an MVP, presenting and coming up with, uh, I believe he co-authored a book with Jamie Laporte, um, He's somebody else that I feel you should connect with from a Microsoft Teams perspective. And then let's highlight a couple others and then I'll take questions here as well. From a Teams perspective, there are contacts that I have that are end user focused, they understand how Teams works, they train users, they explain the differences between maybe email use and Teams or SharePoint and Teams. But then there's a number of people that I have met in person and that I can go to when I have those really technical questions about Teams. And Jeff Schertz works for Poly and is a Microsoft MVP from a unified communications perspective. So he brings a lot of the phone system and the link and Skype background to Microsoft Teams. So he's somebody I can reach out to when somebody asks, hey, are those new team certified headsets from Poly or Yealink or these other companies? What other standards do they work with? Well, I can reach out to Jeff to find out what Poly's story is there with standards and capabilities of the headsets or the phone devices that uh, Polly has. So Jeff is somebody that I would strongly recommend you connect with. He's in Asheville, North Carolina now. He used to live in Chicago. So we met way back when he was a uh, person taking classes and I was the instructor and we've kept in touch ever since. Somebody else like that. Let's see if I can find them on this slide. Would be uh, Dwayne Hyatt. Dwayne has the Shift Show, which is a podcast related to his use of Microsoft Teams in an educational context, as well as he's run a couple large Microsoft Teams online conferences with many, many presenters, many different rooms, moderators, the whole um, whole show for multiple days. And Dwayne is another one of those people that I can reach out to when the question goes into more administration or how do I automate something? How do I do something maybe a thousand times versus a handful of times? So another person I would recommend you connect with. Finally, I mentioned this early and put a link out to Ricardo Wilkins and his Cute for Teams office hours that he runs every Friday, which is tomorrow, at 11 a.m. Eastern. Ricardo is somebody that I found through just, he posts a lot of productivity and Teams related content but he also supports GCC customers as a Microsoft customer success account manager. So there are a number of Microsoft 
success managers, success account managers, different titles at Microsoft. But Ricardo was somebody that I realized, hey, he's got the inside track from a GCC perspective. So when I have students in class that inevitably ask, can I do this that I'm learning about in the GCC tenant or what are some of the differences? Ricardo and his office hours on Friday are one of those things that I always turn to or recommend somebody connect with and attend when they have a chance. They're also out on YouTube and he has a website where he documents a lot of this knowledge for others. So as you can see, there's 60 people that I know. However, this presentation has over 100 people at this point, and this is by no means a completely exhaustive list. The final person I will highlight for you, and then I'll give you access to this entire deck, and this is likely not the last version of this presentation, it'll just get larger as I think of more people I should be highlighting. Sherry Oswald is a Microsoft certified trainer, as well as a Microsoft Office master from a standpoint of the Office applications. And she is referred to as Shortcut Sherry. If there is somebody that you want to learn from it's Sherry about being more productive on the applications you use every day. She has taught me so many different keyboard shortcuts in Teams, other Microsoft applications, Windows itself, that I have lost count of the things that I've learned from Sherry. And there's a short list of people that I would put in that category. They might not all be Teams related resources, but there are some people that just love keyboard shortcuts. And I'm a big fan of those as well. So with that, I'd like to see if there are any questions or types of resources you might be looking for from a team's perspective. Is there anybody that has a particular need from a team's perspective and you're looking for contacts? Feel free to throw that in the chat if there's anything specific you'd like to ask. I don't, I don't know if there's, there's anyone, anyone in particular, particular. But, but I'll share uh, a keyboard shortcut with you, Scott, and uh, the rest of the folks. I have, I mentioned I have over 100 slides, right around 100 in here. Does anybody know from the keyboard how to get to slide 85? No. If you hit 85 and enter, I'm sitting on slide 85. If I hit slide four and enter, I'm sitting on slide four. And three is the slide with all the summary zoom of the first 60. This is something that I would consider not well documented from Microsoft's perspective. Even most trainers that I know don't know about that simple shortcut. If you've ever watched somebody try to hold on, I'm gonna go through my whole deck here and each and every person, and it's gonna take me an hour and a half to get to number 60. You're gonna wish they knew about the 65 enter to be able to get to different slides. So really starting with Mark, these are people that I would consider tertiary to my team's uh, community. They're people that I've heard of, they're people that I came across, they're people that I may have added to LinkedIn. You can see most are first level connections to me. So I've chosen or they have chosen to connect. One of us chose to connect as a first level connection on LinkedIn. And Mark is in the UK and is primarily responsible for the Converse event that's coming up this September, mid-September. So again, any of these contacts you're able to click on, go right to their profile, and then on LinkedIn, if you're not familiar with LinkedIn, one of the things you can do under the more is actually follow people. So 
if I search for something like Microsoft Teams on LinkedIn, and I click on people results, most of the people results here will have something related to Microsoft Teams, either in their headline or in their job description. I can even isolate by company. If I know Avpoint, where Ducks works, is somewhere where I'd like to find out other people that have something related to Teams or Microsoft, in quotes to hopefully avoid a lot of the team lead type titles. I now have different people that work for Avpoint, and I can add either other employers or reset that view. So I'm just looking for people that have Microsoft Teams. And then somebody like Prayer, I've never looked at his profile to my knowledge. When I click on more, I can follow Prayer from down in Florida. And what that does is it gives Prayer a, a notification that I have viewed his profile. So the other thing is you're looking at connecting with some of these people, even if you don't wanna connect, and go to the trouble of adding a, a personalized note to the person that you, maybe you've never met, or you wanna say, hey, I was at a presentation Dan Ray gave, he mentioned that I should connect with you. That's a good way to maybe get a more likely response from the person if they use LinkedIn. But following has been super helpful for me because it means my feed gets these people that I have in my network or that I'm following. So I see their posts. So Rolf is another person that I didn't highlight directly, but he is a MCT and a former Microsoft full-time employee that I would also highlight from the admin side of Teams. A good person to know that is not on my list as of today would be Rolf. And his wife, Denise, is another person that didn't make this first cut, but is somebody else I would recommend you connect with. She is all things Word, Teams, and other aspects of Microsoft productivity, more end user focused. So somebody I can recommend as well. So the presentation goes through all of these different folks that are either here in the US, MVPs, work for Microsoft partners, maybe self-employed, and that I have come across in one way or another. Anybody familiar with Kevin, who left his job at Microsoft because he was making more money on YouTube than at Microsoft as a full full time employee? Yeah, yes, I watch his channel a lot. Yeah, yeah, I use, I use his channel a lot to like, hey everybody, if you want to know how to do something, watch Kevin. Yeah, yeah, I came across him before he left Microsoft, and uh, you know his videos were always kind of in my playlist from a um, YouTube perspective. And he left Microsoft probably within the last six months. His wife, I believe, is still employed at Microsoft. But um, he's another person that I would just highlight. If you're thinking about Microsoft Teams or productivity or just how to do things, great resource. He's done Windows 11 videos already. Um, he's also doing other type of content on YouTube now, so it's not just the Microsoft show. Sohill and a few other people on this list are folks that probably should have been in the first 60 because uh, Sohill and I met when I was doing end user focused training in uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis, Minnesota. And I had a customer and a bunch of Microsoft folks at the Microsoft Technology Center. And fortunately, Sohill came in because to Scott's point about, hey, do I know any of the cool roadmap, you know, insider information? 
So Hill was just transferring from his role out in Minneapolis to a team's project manager and knew all those super secrets, you know, maybe on the roadmap, maybe not on the roadmap yet, or certainly not um, committed from a standpoint of the dates and was able to bring some of that conversation to the customer that had questions about teams, not only from the end user perspective, but the administration and use perspective. So a great person to connect with. And I connected with him immediately after that training, and we've kept in touch at least virtually since. Lots of people on here. Many are in high level roles running either Microsoft Teams or Microsoft 365. Some are hiring like Juan for the VP of engineering on Microsoft Teams. Rish, I didn't put uh, Panos on my list. I probably should have since he was the one who announced Windows 11 would have the Teams application built right in. And he also introduced the Surface Hub, both the original and the version two, which is on a stand and allows you to host Teams meetings in a collaborative and even a battery scenario on a cart. Lots of people, again, that I haven't met in person, uh, many of which you'll see are my second degree connections on LinkedIn. So Ilya and I have 234 mutual connections that we are first level connected with on LinkedIn, but I've never sent him a request to connect and he's never sent me a request to connect or viewed my profile. But by putting him in this presentation, there's a good chance that if he's using LinkedIn, he'll wonder who this Dan Ray person is that was viewing his profile. So I may or may not get a request from Jared to connect or Barbara, who is the meetings product lead from Microsoft. So towards the end of this, don't send the person a note saying, hey, I'd love to connect with you, Barbara. Dan Ray mentioned you because she's going to have no clue who Dan Ray is or why her profile was in this presentation. But this gives you a sense for over 100, just over 100 people that you should know from the Microsoft Teams community. Hopefully there's a few that you are not aware of that I have brought in that first 60 connections that I've made more in person, but then there's at least another 40 that you might have heard of, but would be good to follow on LinkedIn or potentially get to know if you have a chance in the future. Scott, I'll turn things back over to you. Well, um, thank you, Dan. Um, does anyone have questions for Dan? before I stop the recording and then we can chit chat. Okay, I'm gonna hit stop. <laughs>